question came in from Dave. What are the advantages slash disadvantages of using solid state hard drives instead of traditional platter based spinning drives that you would have in your computer? And it's really quite simple technology, this SSD. It's just a bunch of memory stuck on a machine, stuck in a system that can plug into our drive interface. It's flash memory. It's very, very fast flash memory. It works a lot different than hard drives. And your operating system interacts with it in different ways than your hard drives. Solid state is a very, very fast way of storage. I am about to upgrade all of my systems to put solid state in every single one of them. I've already got it on my portable system. I want to put it on my desktop system because I do so much video editing. You would just be amazed at the amount of input and output that happens to your storage device, creating all these temporary files. It does all this rendering, and it does it so much of it that I could save an enormous amount of time with an SSD. The solid state drives are unfortunately, though, as you might expect, more expensive on a per gig basis than a hard drive. There is a premium that you are paying for that. And that becomes a little bit of a challenge. Uh, in the past, when we started with SSDs, a lot of people gave them a bad rap because they were, in some cases, just as slow as a hard drive. In some cases, were not as reliable. Uh, we don't even think of hard drives as being reliable. But when compared to some of those early flash drives, your hard drives were more reliable than that. These days, uh, flash drive technology has improved dramatically just over the last year and a half, last two years. Uh, flash drives are being used in infrastructure equipment now. If you buy a new firewall, if you get a new router, it's probably got a flash drive inside of it. And these are not devices that you expect to, to go down, to be something that's going to fail quickly. They have the flash drives and the mean time between failures for flash drives have increased dramatically so that it can just run and run and run and run for years without expecting any type of problem from those flash drives. So that's one of the, the nice things. Make sure you look at the type of flash drive it is. There are a lot of very significant specifications you should look at, especially the controller type for the flash drive. That's a little bit outside the scope for the A plus exam. But if you're planning on putting in a flash drive, something you could think about. Hard drives, although they are slower, the latest hard drives, transfer rates of hard drives are pretty darn quick, 6 gigabit, gigabits per second for the third version of SATA, and uh, even faster for the Thunderbolt-connected drives. Those are very, very fast. Uh, one of the nice parts about that, though, is hard drives are relatively inexpensive on a per gigabyte basis. So I can get, I can get a 3 terabyte hard drive for less than $200 these days, the time I'm making this particular video. That, that's fantastic from a pricing perspective. Uh, makes it very simple to put a lot of storage inside of my computer. That same price I might spend for a 512 gig uh, SSD drive or a 768 gig SSD drive. So very, very nice to be able to have that there. One of the questions in the chat room, they said, hey, you know, they, they say don't do a defrag on an SSD. In fact, if you tried to do one on an SSD, your operating system should stop you because fragmentation is a problem on devices like a hard drive that has a head that has to find all of the pieces of the drive. The drive is spinning. The head has to move around and wait for the data to come around to it. It takes a lot of time when the, the, the fragmentation for that file is all over the drive. It spends a lot of time trying to find the file, seeking around, hunting it down. Well, with SSDs, instant. You can have a lot of fragmentation on the drive. Instant access. It's right there. Don't even have to do any type of hunting around on the drive. There's no delays. So therefore, no fragmentation worries. A lot of people, and we can have a big argument about fragmentation. Some people just don't feel defragging a drive is even worth it these days. It doesn't really give you enough speed back. And I'm, there's an argument to be made there. The, the small efficiencies that you can make from defragmentation may not be something that you can see from a human perspective. But it does actually it does increase the efficiency of finding the files and pulling them in and doing things with them. So very, very important. That's why a lot of people don't like to push the capabilities of their flash drives, because flash drives can only be written to a certain number of times. Now, that number these days is very, very, very large. I mean, you could write to the drive all day, every day for years and years and years, and the flash drive would still be operational on the latest generation of flash drives. So you want to check your flash drive and make sure it is one of those latest drives and that you're not going to be in a situation where constantly writing information like temp files to it is going to be a problem. I'm buying my flash drive specifically to write temp files to it. 
So it just depends on your requirement and the type of flash drive you're going to get. Isn't the lifespan of a hard drive actuator and ARM even shorter than the lifespan of an SSD via read-write? I guess it would depend on how much it is doing. They're getting pretty close. Uh, they're getting very close. Uh, I mean, literally, there's there's firewalls are writing log files constantly, constant writes. Uh, firewalls probably doing more writing than a server would be doing in most cases because every single bit and byte coming through there every session, it's creating logs and sticking them on an SSD. So if we're doing that in those devices these days, I can easily get one for the, the type of work that I'm doing on mine. Very, very useful to have.